Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Devon Gunsmith Diaries and we have today a Yildiz and it's got a uh, what is becoming a common problem it has difficulty opening and sometimes misfires let's get into this If you enjoy the content, don't forget, like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Okay, when you have a gun that op fails to open properly, avoid the temptation to force it. This is what you need to do. You tap it because it's a broken firing pin more than likely, or a failed firing pin. It then catches on the uh, breech and causes problems. So there's a slight damage to the breech. We will get to that in a minute. And uh, just get into the job specifically. Stock off. Ten mil socket wrench. No blink. And it's a very nice, simple action. Uh, so uh, I will show you how to change firing pins without stripping it down. And in a separate video, I'm more than likely to show you a basic strip down so that you can see it all. So let's get on to that. Nice, straightforward, nothing overly complicated about these. So, right. pin out all the way. There's your broken pin, bottom pin broken. So, it appears to me like one of the springs has disappeared at some point. Possibly we might find it in the action. And somebody has robbed Peter to pay Paul by breaking the spin, cutting the spring in half to uh, try to compensate. Now, this is an older iteration of firing pin. They are not shouldered particularly. With the magic of the TV, here are two new firing pins and they're slightly different, top and bottom, with the springs required. As you can see, they're quite long. And these are conical, coned, I suppose, to shouldered, see? So that has a more intrinsic strength in them. The springs still work absolutely fine. This, the modified, the newer springs pull back that firing pin completely. So there's no fear of this ever happening again. And that is my top spring, which is there okay so you have to rotate this let's try and do it for the camera benefit uh, 
you have to rotate it to that sort of orientation so that it will actually locate. And then you simply drop that spring, that pin back in. Oops, all fingers and thumbs today. There you go, so that's retained. Put these to one side because these are the old things. We don't want them really. They are only going to fail. So, broken pin. Get the bottom pin out. Game conical. There is a slight dimensioning difference. That's why they over the top and bottom spring. And slide that in there. And again, you orient the, uh, the pin. I'm trying to do this. It's quite tricky trying to do it so it's anything useful for the camera to see. Uh, so I'll hold that in place. Just gently tap that in. See if I can find a brass pin. It's all a bit fingers and thumbs when I'm trying to show you. And a classic example, <laughs> it's it's bumped. So need to push that back out again. Obviously, I don't want to... Right, I'm going to be a second. Two seconds, guys. Okay. <clears throat> Couldn't find the drift on my bench. So, start again. So, bottom pin goes in. You orientate the slot like so. It's difficult to show. <laughs> you need five pairs of hands. So I would normally use a thumb at that point and then gently tap that. I need another pair of hands, it's obvious. Is that retained? Apparently so. sure that's rotated correctly and then like I say this is a silly job and you've got to get it to rotate I've got to get this off camera in a second there's another way to do this so you get the slot according to the way you want it you pop in something there to retain it briefly Again, I'm trying to do this so you can actually see something. <laughs> I'd normally do this on my lap. That's the reason I'm struggling here, because I would simply do this in my lap using my lap. There you go. So that drops out, that locates. There we go. Okay, so now they are retained. Both work absolutely fine, as you can see. And that is the repair. Couldn't be simpler. Nice quick one. I will, while I've got it, I will do a strip down or a review of this particular action. Actually, quite like the Yield It as a, an entry level budget gun. I think they're pretty good, and you certainly get what you want out of them. Um, and they do everything. A five thousand pound gun will do, which is go bang. Um, right, so we'll get this back together again. There's a little bit of filing required here, 
just to ease that back into shape. I may, if, I, if I've still got the part, but I will just tap it into, hammer it back into place. There's no point welding it or anything at this point. So we have a little dimple here, uh, knocked out of the rim. Um, and it's annoying because the damage is already done. Well, there's, there's a, just a chance we could tap that back into place. Let's just explore that first. If the damage is too great, we'll have to just give it a, a file. No, that's no good. I'm going to have to sort that out. Let's just see what we can do. Twang, everything goes. Right. Yeah, there's quite a pronounced dimple there. So it's a little bit of filing needed. Just to ease that out. Okay, so I've just deburred that little graze there on there. So that's that sorted and a quick reassembly of these, which are basically modeled on a, on a Beretta style ejector system. You simply push them in, rotate. There we go. Push them in, rotate, let's give that a little tap, there you go, job done, nice. So that's now deburred there, so there won't be any issues with that catching the brass. So that is where we would be now to reassemble the gun. And so that brings this part of the video to an end. And in another episode, I will do a complete strip down of the action. Thanks, guys, for watching.